This video is going to be about how Teddy Roosevelt became president. Now, as you already know, Teddy Roosevelt quit his job as Assistant Secretary of the Navy, and he became the colonel in charge of the Rough Riders. He raised his own army, and the military allowed him to command it even though he had no experience. He became the hero of San Juan Hill, and therefore the hero of the Spanish-American War, and he comes back as the most popular man in America at this moment. So he immediately capitalizes on this by running for governor of his home state of New York, and he wins very easily. Now, what I, another thing that I always loved about Roosevelt is that he didn't do what was politically expedient. He didn't do, in other words, he didn't get paid off by anybody. He would never get paid off by somebody. He was already rich, by the way. I mean, you already know that. <coughs> he did what was right in his own mind. Now, sometimes his decisions were questionable. But if you knew Roosevelt, you knew that no matter what, he was doing what he felt was right. So as soon as he gets in as governor of New York, he starts to have these massive reforms stopping the robber barons from taking power, okay? He banned kids from working in factories with heavy machinery. He upped the labor laws for children. He did random factory safety inspections. And if the factories uh, did not adhere to New York state law, then he shut them down and fined them until they actually adhered to the state law. So he was costing the robber barons millions and millions of dollars. And the robber barons were getting really fed up with this. Now this is gonna be as the governor of New York. So the big robber barons of the day from New York City, they met in a meeting, okay? One of them, a very prominent one, was J.P. Morgan, okay? And if y'all watch The Men Who Built America, y'all know exactly who he was and how important he was to America's history. So they had this secret meeting, and the robber barons are saying, what are we gonna do with Roosevelt? Because he's messing up our businesses. And they tossed around a lot of ideas. One of them was assassination, actually. And they were like, nah, we don't wanna go to prison, okay? So the best idea they could come up with, as far as they were concerned, was to make him vice president of the United States of America. Now, there was one major objection at that meeting. J.P. Morgan stood up and looked all the other robber barons in the face and said, you realize that the only thing between that cowboy and the presidency of the United States is a bullet. And everybody decided we're gonna make him vice president anyway. So the previous vice president of, of William McKinley <clears throat> had, um, I think he had died or either that or McKinley just kicked him out of office basically, something like that. And they needed a new vice. They needed a new vice president. So Roosevelt becomes vice president of the United States in order to stop him from his reform activities in New York State. That was the reason. And he gladly accepted his post. Well, a couple of months after that, William McKinley is at a campaign stop. He, he is at a, basically a party. And this guy, Leon, I never get this right. Uh, Nah, I'm, I'm not even gonna try. Here we go. Leon, this guy, okay? Uh, he walks up and he shoots McKinley with a revolver several times in the stomach, and he lingers on for about a day, and then President Roosevelt is inaugurated after McKinley dies, okay? So, your definition for William McKinley. He is the uh, third president to be assassinated. We, if you remember it, we're gonna go over them right now. You need to know these, okay? Lincoln's first, Garfield is second, then McKinley, and then Kennedy, all right? That's the only four that have been killed so far. Now, a lot of other ones have died in office, but that's not the same thing. All right, Roosevelt becomes the youngest president ever in American history at the age of 42, okay? The closest to that is Kennedy, and he was 43, okay? So, all right, anyway. So we got a, uh, basically a historic painting, okay? This guy, uh, Leon here, he's got his gun wrapped up in a handkerchief and he walks up to the president to presumably shake his hand. 
and he fills his stomach with bullets, okay? So here we go, the official newspaper of the day from Boston. Now, a little bit of backstory. Who's supposed to protect the president today? Well, that's the job of the Secret Service. You should probably know that, right? A little interesting fact that I find amazing is that on the day that Lincoln was assassinated, he signed the Secret Service into being. Okay, that, that's kind of weird. Uh, but at the time, it actually wasn't to protect the president. The Secret Service, their main job was to look for counterfeit currency. So they would go around looking for money that was fake. Okay? Later on, after the death of McKinley, they're going to change that role to where the president, the vice president, and their families get protection. Okay? Presidents get protection for life, for, for the rest of their life. Not the vice president, not the families, okay? Just the president. So, Teddy Roosevelt comes in and immediately does something that takes a lot of guts. He declares war on the robber barons with his very first inaugural speech, okay? And if you remember, an inauguration is the big party where the president is sworn in. Okay, we're about to have one right here uh, for Mr. Joe Biden, apparently. So... Uh, inauguration by a square deal okay his his speech that day was called the square deal it is his domestic policy which means that his that's his policy towards the country okay so here we go quote from his uh, square deal speech I mean not merely that I stand for fair play under the present rules of the game but for having those rules changed to work for a more substantial equality of opportunity Okay, and I put this in bold. Today, we're in a very turbulent time in American history, in 2021, okay? That's when this video was filmed. Um, these three words mean a massive thing, equality of opportunity. So he's saying everybody should have an equal chance. Now, that is what conservatives and libertarians say, equality of opportunity. Liberals typically say equality of outcome, which the big difference is equality of outcome means that no matter how hard you try, everybody should be the same. Okay, that means that a doctor and a ditch digger should make the same amount of money. That's communism, that's socialism. Okay, equality of opportunity means that. The game is not rigged, that the robber barons aren't in charge, but also that the government's not taking away all the money from the rich people and giving it to the poor. This, in my opinion, is kind of the ideas that America was founded on. Equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome. There's a huge difference there, okay? All right, Roosevelt stepped in at a very bad moment in American history. It's at the end of the Gilded Age, okay? And because of the robber barons and their abuses towards the American citizens, he fully expected that there might be another civil war soon, or at the very least, a rebellion that he would have to put down, okay? So Roosevelt believed that Americans would rebel against the government to take power from the robber barons. The average American's yearly salary in 1901 was $700, okay? They spent nearly 50% of that on food. So, can you imagine, you make $700 a year and you have to give half of your money for food, and by the way, you're not eating boiled crawfish and steak, okay? You're eating sausage from Chicago, if you know what I'm saying, and crackers and stuff like that, and that's literally taking half your income. But that's because of these massive robber baron monopolies. Uh, anyway, so that's what was going on. Roosevelt had to declare war against the robber barons. He had to show the people that he was on their side and that he could not be bought by the robber barons. So that's it for this video.